what's up regulars today I'm rebuilding a set of sports seats for my 944 uh, I may or may not have a video on this just because I uh, I kind of got started without filming maybe I'll do the uh, reupholstery section but right now I'm rebuilding the power seat motors or not the motors but the switches as you can see uh, I got one of them out already they do not work I've tested them and uh, it's pretty simple why they don't work. It's just a very simple 1980s switch. But I want to show you uh, how to rebuild these and other switches too. There's um, there's a lot of switches in this car that are just like this: window switches, sunroof switch, um, door lock switch. They're they're very similar in the way they are designed, and they're very similar in the way that they fail. So, anyways. Let's get started taking one of these things apart, cleaning it up, and then showing you that it works. Alright, so the first step is to get the switch out of the casing. There's two little tabs right here. And I'm going to use my flat screwdriver. And I'm just going to push each tab down. Just barely pop it forward. Just like that. Now, if you're doing the same job as I am, which is the power seat buttons, um, all the power seat switches are exactly the same. They have the two wires for the motor and the two wires that go in the harness for the uh, positive and negative. You can see they're each their own assembly, but they're exactly the same. All right, so now what I'm going to do is very carefully, without breaking this, because if you break this off, that's it. I'm going to depress these tabs on the side, right here, and right here. You can kind of do one at a time, and we'll pop the switch up and out. Now there's going to be two bearings in here and two springs. You might want to be, uh, well, not might, you want to be careful not to lose them. They can go flying. You can see I'm just barely popping this up. And it went flying. So as you can see, I have one spring right here, one spring right here. This little uh, brass pin in this spring goes inside of the middle, and then there's two ball bearings. Now the reason why these fail in here is every time that this little uh, this little switch right here moves up and down when you push it makes a contact and it sparks just the tiniest little spark and that spark creates carbon and then over time especially if it hasn't been used in a long time um, it does not make a good enough connection to be able to move up and down or to make the proper connection so to get this out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend just this tab and screwdriver on it just this tab right here. I'm going to bend it out and then I can pull the little arm out. So I'm going to use the pliers. Bend it just a little bit. Just enough to get this tab out. see that little circle right there, that black circle, let's see, right there, that's your issue right there, that's all carbon, it's not letting you have a good connection. Also, let me know if you guys like this style of video a little bit better, I'm still trying new things out, you can see the, the circle right there. Alright, so... It's real simple to clean this. I got 320 grit wet and dry sandpaper. All I'm going to do is put it around my finger. Three passes. Let's do four just because. See that? Nice and clean, right? Now what I'll do is the same thing in here. 
I'll wipe the sandpaper down on this uh, on this pin right here I'm pointing out the screwdriver and then I'll put this back on in the same orientation that it came off and then I'll do it to the other side and then once that's done I'm gonna take a little bit of brake clean not a lot just a squirt and clean it out when I have those back together I'll get back with you all right sorry I didn't do that on video um, I just don't really know how to film and do it at the same time anyways as you can see that these move freely that's you want to make sure they're just like how they were when they came out next step I'm just gonna spray not a lot just a little bit of brake clean in there just to make sure that any dried up grease and stuff is out take my Kimball guys microfiber towel because that's all I have laying around wipe it nice and clean all right now not necessarily a uh, crucial step or important step but definitely helps is a little bit of dielectric grease or um, there's different kinds of like synthetic greases you could use I prefer this this is also what I have I'm gonna put a little drop in the middle where that pin rides and I'm gonna put a little drop actually I'll just show you on these little arms right here and the reason why I'm putting them on top of those arms is not to lubricate them for moving but it's to hold these ball bearings in place while I um, put it together most of these old um, most of these old switches are kind of a bear to put back together but you can see the grease in there the bearings here this is I'm holding at an angle now wow I'm bad at this see how the ball bearings aren't moving anywhere so it, it kind of helps you a little bit I tell you what this part right here might take you a couple tries I know it always takes me like three or four times oh, shoot I'm already screwing it up by dropping pieces everywhere a pair of tweezers probably very handy maybe a, a nice good light over your workbench Drop the spring in there, that's my dog freaking out. All right, put these springs in here. I'm actually gonna put some dielectric grease here too to help hold this thing from coming out. I don't want it to fall out. You may possibly have to do this a couple times. <laughs> so don't get upset if you have to do this like three or four times. took me a couple tries to get it also take note the way you took it apart there's these channels right here um, these channels go on the same side as these little pins right here you can put it on backwards um, obviously you don't want to basically I'm just gonna line it up and very carefully without it clipping in aggressively or shifting these um, ball bearings so you can see every time I slip I pull it off and I check and I make sure that everything is still where I put it You want to be careful make sure you're not breaking anything remember the point here is to restore these so you don't have to replace them and as you can see I moved the bearing so I'm gonna put it back and I'm gonna try again so let's try it again if I don't get it on this next take I'll come back to you <laughs> I feel like I don't think you'd want to sit here and watch me struggle for 
Unless you guys do like watching me struggle, then I could probably make a YouTube channel on that. I'd be struggling all the time. All right. Uh, I don't know about that one. No, sir. Failure again. Anyways, slowly but surely, keep trying. You'll eventually get it. I'll come back to you when I have this together. All right. So now that... You have it put together, it's time to test it. So, excuse me while I bring in the seat bottom that I restored. Obviously I'm not gonna get all of it in frame. Ooh, this thing barely fits on my table. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna plug this rebuilt switch as you can see, super nice, clicky, satisfying. I'm gonna plug it into this motor. All right, so let's plug into the motor and I'm going to grab a battery. What I have right here is a drill battery. I put two coins in it because uh, I found them in the seat actually. Anyways, so what I'll do is I'll hold the terminals on the battery. This is a 12 volt system. And there you go. No witchcraft right there, it works. All right, so. To recap that, I'm gonna disconnect this real quick. Always grab from the connector, not grab the wire. So basically, to make it short and simple, these switches with age fail. And it's because the contact makes a little bit of um, a little spark and it makes a little bit of carbon build up on the switch and it does not make an actual connection and it's that simple just to take it apart and clean it up and put it back together with a little bit of a uh, little bit of grease or uh, like an electrical kind of loop and almost every single switch in your vehicle is like that and benefits from that including door locks you could take the door locks apart clean them out real good put it back together um, I highly suggest uh, before you spend money unless you're doing like a Concord restoration it's Before spending the money on switches just give it a shot I mean the worst you could do if you're already planning on buying new ones is break the old one but basically That's all I have for this video If you guys like uh, Like the video give it a thumbs up of course or thumbs down uh, Please subscribe if you have any ideas for future videos. Let me know uh, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing me struggle trying to put these seats together. Uh, unfortunately, I did take them apart. They were pretty messed up. I'll put a picture right here. And um, I already took them apart and restored one of the seat bottoms. I have the other two seat rails for the other seat sitting in evaporust. Those are ready to get wire wheeled. And the other seat is ready to get clean and wire wheeled and throw, have a little bit of paint thrown on it. Um, I'm getting the seat foam. I had a professional do it. I was not going to bother that. So they're fixing the foam for me. And I got eBay seat covers I'm going to throw on. I wanted to get an I-44, uh, only an I-44 seat covers. But um, they're back ordered to like June. And unfortunately, I'm impatient. So I bought cheap ones. They'll probably rip in like two years and I'll go buy them again. But yeah, if you like the video, please like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.